so the next thing that we need to know about if we now again look at our equation that we are going to deal with, I think we have now dealt with force and the different kinds of forces that might give us trouble. But now let's look at delta x. Now, delta x is displacement. Normally, that doesn't give us a lot of trouble because you see what happens is that the displacement is normally specified. They will say through a displacement of 10 meters or whatever. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, what we can maybe at this point just take note of is that we are just considering straight motion, motion in a straight line, one-dimensional motion. In other words, we can either look at horizontal movement like the example that we've just looked at with a crate, with or without resistance, friction. We can look at the vertical motion, uh, like an object that's being lifted through the air or thrown upwards or something falling through the air or, or it might be laid down through a cable or something, uh, with or without resistance. And then we can look at something that's moving up or down an incline with or without resistance. But there's really nothing more about displacement that should give us trouble. Now, the last one in the equation that we must look at then is theta, the angle between the displacement and the force. That is now theta. And we're not going to look just at theta. We are going to look at cos theta, what exactly that means. Now, if we've got now, for instance, let's say, for instance, that the green pen is my displacement and the red pen is the force, then if the force is acting in the direction of the displacement, the angle between them, theta, is zero. And then we have to deal with cos naught. But as the angle increases, suppose now that somebody is pulling a cart at an angle of 30 degrees or something like that, then we will deal with F delta X cos theta, the angle between them. And if the force is at right angles, if that angle is 90 degrees, then we're going to deal with cos 90. And if the force, like the frictional force for instance, is in the opposite direction to the displacement, we are dealing with 180 degrees. Then the angle between the force and displacement is 180 degrees. Now, let's look at pure, simple maths regarding cos theta as it changes from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, how the value of cos theta changes. Now, if we now look at this diagram that we've got here, now, let's say that the displacement is along the positive x-axis. So the displacement is in that direction. The displacement is in that direction. Now, as the force changes, it can be in the direction of displacement or it can be opposite to the displacement like the frictional force. What I want you to notice is that cos theta, cos theta, is x divided by r. Cos theta is x divided by r. Now, if, cos the, if theta is naught, then we notice that if it's very small, if it's close to naught, then you can see that r is pretty close to x. But if theta is naught, then x and r have got exactly the same values. So then cos theta, cos naught, will then be the same one divided by itself. In other words, cos naught will be 1. Let's write that down. Cos naught equals 1. Now, if we increase this, you can see that as you, as you look now at the value of x, as it goes up, the value of x decreases, decreases, it decreases. Now it's quite small, the value of x. If it's 90 degrees, then you can see x is 0. So cos 90, cos theta, 
will then be 0 divided by r, which gives you 0. So in other words, cos 90 is 0. And now, as the force goes into the second quadrant, remember that now we work with negative x values. If it goes into the second quadrant, you will find that now, as it goes from 90, you can see that the x value increases, it increases, it increases, it increases, until the angle is 180 degrees. If you go from there right to there, it's 180 degrees. Then you can see that, once again, that minus x and r, that they are equal in magnitude. Therefore, you will find that cos 180 is x divided by minus x, so that gives you then minus 1. So cos 180 degrees is minus 1. This part here is of extremely, it's, it's extremely important because we are going to deal with cos naught very often. Like for instance, the force, um, when the force and the displacement, when they are in the same direction, the angle between them will be naught. Then immediately we can know that cos naught is 1. But if you are working with a force that is perpendicular, for instance, the normal force that's perpendicular to the displacement, then the work done by that is going to be 0 because cos, if we look at again at the equation, W equals Fx cos theta. If cos theta is 0, the work done is zero. So in other words, the force, the work done by the normal force will be zero because cos 90 is zero. And then if you work, for instance, with a frictional force that's acting in this direction, it's going to have negative work because now it's going to be minus one. The cos theta will have a minus value and that will cause you to have negative work done. So this is extremely, extremely important that we know these three values. I mean, you can get it on your pocket calculator, but it will be worthwhile to just remember that, that cos naught is 1, cos 90 is 0, and cos 180 degrees is minus 1. Right, so that then deals with the cos theta. I think we've now done the troubles, all the troubles that we can come across with f, and then delta x, and then also theta. Now, when we work with the work energy theorem, we will often have to work with a net force. And now the problem is, how do we calculate net force? If we now look at an example as to how we can calculate net force, uh, then let's have a look at this, for instance. Here we've got a crate again, on a rough surface, and the force exerted on the crate is 100 newtons, and we've got the frictional force is 20 newtons. Now, what will the resultant force acting on this crate be? There are two ways that we've learned previously by which one can calculate the resultant force. One can either do a vector diagram, where you say, all right, you start with any force, you've got the 100 newtons in that direction, and then where it ends, the next force star starts, the 20 newtons start, and it's in that direction. And then your resultant, your net force, will be drawn from the start of the first one to the end of the last one, which will be that. That will be your net force. And I think it's quite obvious that it's going to be 80 newtons in that direction. The, or the other alternative is to select a direction as positive. Let's say we choose this direction as positive, and then you just get the algebraic sum of all the forces. Then that force is going to be plus 100 newtons, and that one acting in the negative direction is going to be minus 20 newtons. So the algebraic sum, F net, will then be 100 newtons plus minus 20 newtons, and then that gives you plus 80 newtons, which means it is 80 newtons in the positive direction 
in other words, 80 newtons in that direction. So that is now the way in which we can determine the net force. You can use either that method or that one. It all depends on what suits your brain. We all have different brains, thanks heavens. And um, sometimes you find that some people find this is so easy and that's difficult. Some people would say this is so easy and that is so difficult. Whatever you like, you choose that method, the one that suits your liking. Right, so that is then how we calculate the net force. Now, the next thing that I would like to look at when we look at this diagram is how to calculate the, the, the different works, if we can use that word, the work done by the boy or the work done by friction. Now, one of the problems that I've learned people experience is they might ask you to calculate the work done by the boy. Now some people battle with a problem. If I have to calculate the work done by the boy, which force do I use? I mean, I know that I'm going to use the equation that says F net equals uh, um, W equals F delta X cos theta. But the problem is which F to use if I want to calculate now the work done by the boy. And that's why what I recommend is that you write here, the work done by the boy is F boy delta X cos theta. You see, now you know exactly. You just look at the question. If they ask you calculate the work done by the boy, then it's the force exerted by the boy. It's as simple as that. Now, now it's not difficult at all. The force exerted by the boy is 100 newtons. Oh yes, I forgot to say, let's assume that the displacement is five meters. And the displacement is five meters, and the angle between the force exerted by the boy and the displacement. The displacement is in that direction, and the force is in that direction. So in other words, the angle between them is naught. So cos naught, if you remember, is plus one. So that gives you then 500 joules. Suppose they ask you, calculate the work done by friction. Then it's really as simple as this. The work done by friction is the force applied by friction times delta x cos theta. And now it's very simple. The force applied by the friction is 20 newtons times the displacement x is 5. And the angle between the displacement and the frictional force is 180 degrees, right? So it's cos 180, which, if you remember, is minus 1. So 20 times 5 times minus 1 gives you minus 100. And now, what is the net work? The net amount of work you can calculate then by just adding the different works together. So it's the work by the boy plus the work done by friction, and that is then 500 minus 100, and that gives you 400 joules. So this is really a very easy way to calculate the net force, and the net work. Another way of calculating the net work is by looking at the net force. Now we have already said that the net force in this case is, as we have calculated previously, let me just get that again, the net force we said was 80 newtons in that direction. So in other words, you can calculate the net force by saying the net force is the force exerted by the boy plus the force exerted by friction, which is then 100 in the positive direction and 20 in the negative direction, in other words, minus 20, and that gives you plus 80 or 80 in the positive direction. Now the net work, you can also calculate by saying net work is net force times displacement cos theta. The net force we've calculated is 80, the displacement is five, and because the net force is in that direction, the, the, the angle between the displacement and the force is zero. So in other words, cos naught, which is one, and that gives you 400 joules. As before, we have, in that way, we have calculated uh, that it was 400 joules 
This way, we calculated that it's 400 joules. So it really doesn't matter whether you use this method or whether you use this method. Let's just compare the two methods. In this method, you calculated the work done by the boy, you calculated the work done by friction, and you added the two works together. In this case, you calculated the net force, and then you said net work equals net force times displacement cos theta, and then you calculate the net work. And whether you like that method or whether you like this method doesn't really matter. You use the method of your choice. Once again, if you say, oh, no, that first method is a lot easier, do it that way by any means. Or if you like the second one, it's shorter, surely you do that. Nobody is going to prevent you from using any one of the two methods. You use the method that you like and that suits your taste, and that maybe suits that particular problem. But please know that there are two ways of doing this problem, of getting the net amount of work. Now, let's do another example, but with a little bit of a twist. And that is now, now this is going to be a force that is acting at an angle. I'm now going to work a little bit faster, just to save time that we can get through everything. Now here again, we've got the 10, new th the 10 kilogram body. The boy is now pulling it at an angle, 30 degrees angle, and the force is 100 newtons, and the frictional force, once again, is 20 newtons. Now, once again, there are two ways in which you can solve the problem. You can either calculate the work done by the boy and the work done by friction, and then you can say the net work done is the work done by the boy, plus friction, or you can calculate what is the net force, and then you can say net work equals the net force delta x cos theta. Let's quickly do each one of the two. Right, so the work done by the boy is the force exerted by the boy, which is 100 newtons, times the displacement, if it's again five meters, right? But this time, the angle between the force and the displacement is 30 degrees, so it's cos 30. And if you work that out on your pocket calculator, you'll arrive at 433.01 joules. The work done by friction as previously, the force exerted by the friction, which is 20 newtons, delta x is five meters, and cos theta is cos 180 degrees, because now the friction is in that direction, the displacement is in that direction, the angle between them is 180 degrees. So it's cos 180, and if you work that out, it's minus 100 joules. So the net work done is the work done by the boy, plus the work done by friction, and if you add them, you get 333.01. The other method says, if you work out what is the net force, and now please remember that we have to deal with the forces along the plane in which it's moving. So we're not going to work with a force like that, but the component of the force, this component that's acting in that direction. We are also go going to come across this when we work on an inclined plane. So you work with that component. Right, so in other words, the force exerted by the boy, the horizontal component is 100 cos 30, and the frictional force is minus 20, so in other words, if you work that out, it's 66.60 newtons. The net force, the net work, is then the net force times the displacement times cos theta. So that gives you then the net force is 66. Displacement is 5 cos 0. And again, you arrive at exactly the same answer of 333. Now, once again, it's up to you to decide which one of these two methods you like better. And you can use the method that your brain tells you to use. I like this one. And then you use that method. Good. I think we've done e enough examples now on how to calculate net force. So are we ready now for the work energy theorem?